The universe of Half-Life is vast and grand, although the majority of humanity only knows of the species we have here on planet Earth. There are others that are aware of another plane of existence, and within this small group, there are even some of a more adventurous nature that have even visited it. Within this mysterious place, just out of reach of our dimension, there is an entire ecosystem home to many species, natural resources, and materials with properties unknown to Earth. Alongside this dimension's unusual properties, this place also has the unique ability to bridge itself to other planets, dimensions, and universes in the vast multiverse. What is this magnificent place? How important is it to the survival of many species across the multiverse? And what happened after humanity discovered it? Here we explore in the lore behind Zen. As the multiverse formed, an astounding amount of stars, planets, and various other celestial beings formed into what we now know as the universe. To each species that has explored their own observation of their home within the multiverse, they have seen just how miraculous the construction of our fabric of reality really is. As we, humanity, have observed only what is visible from our planet using advanced telescopes both placed on Earth and from the extremely advanced systems we have sent out into space, there is another place, right there but just out of sight. Tucked away in space, hidden between dimensions, the border world of Zen exists within its own dimension. With existing in such a special region in the multiverse, the border world is shown to have unique properties unseen and unheard of in the universe. With existing across various dimensions and worlds, Zen has the unique property of being able to connect to these locations. Essentially, a gateway from one universe to another where those traveling through Zen could even stay. Upon passing through this plane of existence, at first glance, Zen appears to consist simply of floating islands lost in a body of colorful stars. It was observed that, similar to planet Earth, this location also appears to have a gravitational pull holding the islands in one place and fairly connected to one another. Furthermore, this level of gravity is also noted to be slightly weaker than Earth's. Alongside this gravitational pull, it is also noted that the atmosphere surrounding the border world is oxygen-based, an atmosphere that would allow human life to survive here. With Zen having the ability to not only connect to multiple dimensions across the multiverse, but also the capability to naturally allow many of those passing through to survive inside of its atmosphere, this border world would soon become a home to many of the species across the vast multiverse. As this border world has the ability to offer passage to those moving through, over the years, more species, for their own reasons, decided to stay within Zen and made it their home. Existing on its own plane, Zen also added a degree of protection for those seeking a safe haven from the troubles of their own universes. While mostly safe in Zen, this did not mean that those that came here would be safe from the new species that would discover the border world over time. With no creature being native to Zen, all of those deciding to stay would attempt to adapt the border world to make their habitation easier. But, with various sentient beings existing in one place, there will always be a food chain, and the species at the top would dominate those below it. Born from the mighty Gonark, the headcrab species were noted to wander the plain, searching for creatures to attack and take control of. It seems that the humanoid species were the most compatible hosts for this process, where they could then control the bodies and use them to cause havoc on the surrounding environment. Although humanity would later suffer greatly against this species, during Zen's early years before the introduction of the humans, 
it appears that they simply lived out their days. Although the head crabs are dangerous in their own right, the bull squid were shown to live close to the magnificent healing bodies of water around Zen. Here, they would hunt together and fire out dangerous projectiles at any that came into range. Similar to the bull squid, the hound eye would hunt in packs searching for prey. Upon discovering their prey, they would emit a deadly sonic boom, killing their prey with ease. Found within cave-like structures, hidden on the roofs, the barnacle species had not only naturally evolved to grow in the most tactical locations, but they had also learned to trap their prey with their long tongues that would flow towards the ground, just waiting for something to touch it. Upon sensation, the barnacle would latch onto their prey and bring it up to their mouth, consuming whichever poor creature alive. With these creatures being only a few of those across the vast border world of Zen, they had taken over their own sections of the border world, creating an almost balanced ecosystem. While these are only a few of the creatures discovered inside of Zen, there are many, many more thriving in the border world, and many more to come. Throughout the multiverse, a dominating alien army had formed, the Combine. Using their advanced technology, they jumped from universe to universe with the aim to not only invade any planet they discovered sentient lifeforms on, but also to enslave and assimilate them into their army. With each invasion, they became stronger and stronger with new soldiers in their armies. On one of their conquests, they came upon the homeworld of the Vortigaunt species. During this brutal takeover, many of the species discovered a gateway to the border world of Zen and passed through to safety, leaving the Combine and the rest of their civilization behind. With the Combine not having followed them through into the border world, it seemed that this gateway had only been active for a short period of time before the dimension separated from one another. With the surviving members of the Vortigaunt species now within Zen, they made this place their home, believing they could live here in safety, hidden between dimensions. Over time, the Vortigaunt began to colonize the land, constructing small buildings and various pieces of technology. As one of the more intelligent species in the multiverse, the creatures studied their surroundings and discovered many miraculous qualities of this border world. They found pools of water throughout the islands that had astounding healing properties, floating platforms that defied even Zen's gravitational pull and different star systems across the expansive land. For food, the Vortigaunt hunted the roaming headcrabs for nutrition. Although Zen had, at this point, become more dangerous as new creatures discovered this place and made a home here, it only showed the Vortigaunt's ability to adapt and survive in an unforgiving environment. Not only that, but the Vortigaunt also has a natural connection to a power called the Vortessence. Using this, they were able to shoot extremely damaging arcs of power at any that attacked them, and some had the ability to stop time, see into the future, and even teleport, a mysterious power that humanity struggles to understand, even to this very day. As many of the creatures that roam Zen are dangerous in themselves, the floating islands also have their own selection of plant life, but the term plant life would simply downplay what these actually are as some flora across Zen appear to have characteristics of both plant and creature. As these flora had also managed to flourish here from the stray seeds of passing wondrous dimensions, the ecosystem of Zen adapted with each one. Scattered across the border world, trees stand bare without coverage, simply existing, but Upon further inspection, these trees were shown to swipe at any that came close, taking out the weaker, curious species exploring Zen. Alongside these, small stalks beam out light into the local vicinity. 
although useful to the species that required this light to navigate this dimension. These stalks were also shown to naturally retreat when in close proximity to anything that could harm them, taking its light with it. As Zen itself exists in what appears to be a void full of stars, lights from these giant cosmic entities flood the islands from all directions, leaving the whole region fairly well lit. But with extensive cave structures under the ground, these stalks also allowed those navigating the caves to explore in safety without fear of bumping into one of the dangerous creatures lurking, or even worse, a barnacle's tongue. Alongside the trees and lighting stalks, fungi also grow across the plain, an essential factor in an ecosystem, with their main feature being to break down dead organic matter into rich nutrient for more fertile soil, therefore allowing more flora to grow in a more nurturing land. In large pits across Zen, creatures with a large tentacle had made their way onto the border world. If any were to come near the circumference of these pits, the tentacles would rise up and strike out, leaving any that had made the mistake to explore these crevices either extremely injured or dead. For the most part, Zen had been a very hospitable environment for the vortigaunt species that had made a home here, even with the dangerous flora and fauna that would attack on sight. As with many places with sentient life, a natural hierarchy based on power still exists and the Vortigaunt would soon find themselves in servitude to a stronger being, something they had fled their own homeworld to avoid. On another distant planet in the multiverse, the Combine discovers another species to conquer, the Nylanth species. During a vicious decimation of the race, one member manages to escape their grasp and finds a connection to the border world of Zen, fleeing with other species from its planet. Arriving in the border world, the Nylanth made its home here and after discovering the Vortigaunt, it discovered that it had enough power to enslave them using its natural psychic abilities. With this, the Vortigaunt became slaves to the last Nylanth and for many years, they would live in servitude to it. With new creatures discovering Zen over the years, the Nylanth added each of them into its own personal army. Their knowledge from various fields in their own world aided the Nylanth to the point where it had a factory constructed by those that served it. Inside of this factory, the enslaved Vortigaunts worked the lines of the machinery to grow advanced creatures that would become grunts in an army. Upon coming out of their shell that they had been grown in, they would already have the knowledge of combat, instantly ready to fight for their leader. In this ever-growing army consisting of alien grunts, alien controllers, Gargantua, and many others, the Nylanth could prepare for any invasion that may come to Zen. On top of this, the creatures under its control further colonized the planet with buildings to not only house the creatures, but also to create technology and weaponry. With Zen consisting of many islands floating in a cosmic void, the species here used their knowledge from their own worlds to construct technology that had the ability to form portals from one island to another for easier navigation. As Zen had the natural ability to connect to any world across the multiverse, the Nylanth, the last of its kind, searched for a real world to live in peace without the threat of the Combine discovering it and wiping out its species once and for all. With factories, military bases, full control of Zen, and an army at its disposal, the Nylanth would wait inside of its chamber using its psychic powers to watch over the plane in safety. As the vast ecosystem of Zen continued to grow, more worlds would connect to and discover it, and soon, so would humanity. Within the Milky Way galaxy on planet Earth, Humanity had advanced to the point where they had begun to experiment with teleportation technology. At the Black Mesa Research Facility, 
a top-secret location within the New Mexico desert, the scientists had created a teleportation device. During their tests, they discovered a location that had never been seen before, the vast border world of Zen. With this groundbreaking discovery, the scientists put together survey teams to enter this new land. Here, these teams would explore Zen and acquire samples to study in order to learn more about this new place. Although the atmosphere itself had the capacity to support the human body, the scientists still took caution and wore HEV suits. On their journeys, they discovered the various species that lived there, to which some of the unfortunate members of the team lost their lives too. Although dangerous, Black Mason knew that the discoveries on this border world could push forward humanity's knowledge of the universe by not only decades, but hundreds of years. As they brought back creatures, samples from the environment, and photographs of the islands, the team noticed crystals naturally forming throughout the floating rocks, crystals that had unique properties unseen on Earth. Aware that these crystals could aid their knowledge of the universe, they began to bring them back to Earth where the anomalous materials team would study them using a specially built anti-mass spectrometer. In spite of the flora and fauna occasionally taking the lives of the survey team that travelled the land, it appeared that Black Mesa saw this loss of life as a worthy risk to learn more about the universe and how it worked. As the team grew and Black Mesa thrived, all seemed well for humanity and its future. But, humanity's repeated trips to Zen had made an impression on those that lived there, and even worse, the Nylanth had noticed them. Humanity had something it wanted, a planet away from the Combine. All it needed was a way to access Earth and take it for itself using an army of loyal servants. An action that had previously left the Nylanth in this position in the first place. Only now, the creature was on the other side of the war. Although an entire species would potentially fall, it would be better in the long run for the Nylanth. A desperate act by a desperate creature for safety away from the threat of the Combine. Into the 2000s on planet Earth, on a normal day, the scientists of the Black Mesa Research Facility were preparing for a substantial experiment. In Sector C, the anomalous materials team had been given a Zenian crystal sample acquired by unknown means, GG-3883. With the Black Mesa Administrator, Dr. Wallace Breen, having put pressure on the scientists to acquire as much information as they could about the sample, they adjusted the regular safety parameters of their normal use with the anti-mass spectrometer, causing issues and power shortages across the entirety of Black Mesa. As the experiments began, Dr. Gordon Freeman, a member of this team, is instructed to activate the giant machine from within the testing chamber. Following on from this, he moves the Zenian crystal sample into the beam of the anti-mass spectrometer. As the crystal hits the beam, it shatters, flooding the entire Black Mesa research facility with exotic matter. With this, a resonance cascade occurred, ripping a hole in time and space, resulting in a bridge connecting planet Earth to the border world of Zen. Now, the Nylanth had its moment to seek safety from the Combine, but doom humanity in the process. Sending forth its army by manipulating the portals around the facility, various other creatures moved in to Black Mesa in an attempt to take out any that would be a threat to the Nylanth upon its arrival. As the Nylanth moved forward with its plan to take over Earth, another race had also discovered Zen, Race X. Here, they constructed a portal to Earth, also hoping to claim it for themselves. Using Zen as a gateway, they flooded parts of the Black Mesa research facility with their creatures, with the plan to make space for one of the larger creatures, the Gene Worm, a monstrous being capable of terraforming the environment around it so that it would be suitable for the race X species upon their occupation of planet Earth. 
Over the following hours, the Xenian and Race X armies moved through the facility, attempting to take out any they came across. In this chaos, the scientists attempted to perform a resonance reversal. After sending a satellite delivery rocket outwards, Gordon believed he had successfully closed the dimensional rift between Earth and Zen, but the Nylanth, at this point, had used its abilities to hold open the rift, keeping the connection strong between Earth and Zen. With this, Gordon entered the border world using a teleporter in the Lambda complex to enter Zen and close the rift, once and for all. Working his way through the extensive floating islands and navigating the impressive portal system of Zen, Gordon discovers the bodies of the survey team that had attempted to collect samples for Black Mesa along the way. Progressing through the dangerous flora and fauna of the border world, Gordon finally reaches the final portal to the Sanctum of the Nylanth, a place within Zen just as vast as the rest of the border world he had traversed along. In the center, a giant portal had been constructed towards the end of the platforms and after safely jumping across them, thanks to the reduced gravitational pull of the border world, Gordon entered the giant, ominous red portal. Meeting the Nylanth face to face, Gordon and the creature engage in a tense fight for the future of planet Earth. Although the Nylanth fought on its own turf and used the crystals of the cave to heal itself, Gordon defeats the creature, killing it. Instantly upon its death, the Nylanth's head opens, spewing out portals and charges of energy, flooding the entire sanctum with them. To Gordon's luck, he is teleported out of this region to safety, leaving this once occupied room empty and Zen free from any dominating force to guide over it. The death of the Nylanth left a power vacuum at the top of the hierarchy, where the many species that had served under this monstrous creature could now either leave Zen or attempt to take control of it for themselves. Although some of the species would be up for this challenge, there were outside forces that had been watching this whole situation unfold. They had somehow known that Gordon would kill the Nylanth and leave Zen free for someone to take it. As the G-Man and his employers took this magnificent border world under their control, the G-Man employed Gordon for his successful part in a plan that had seemingly been orchestrated even before the Black Mesa incident. It is unknown what the G-Man and his employers truly wanted to acquire Zen for, but with this location having so many unique properties that many locations across the multiverse lack, it is safe to assume that their plan will only be revealed in time. While the plan to acquire Zen through an intricate string of events may have been worth whatever goal these mysterious entities had been working towards, there was also a side effect of this acquisition. The Resonance Cascade had alerted the Combine of planet Earth, and now they were preparing to strike down on humanity just like they had on the Vortigaunt, Nylan, and many other species across the multiverse. Using Zen, they travelled through to Earth and humanity experienced what many other species had encountered, the dominating, brutal force of the Combine Empire. Over the next 20 years, Zen was not visited by humanity, but it was still used by them. As the Black Mesa research facility had installed a relay device on this vast group of floating islands, they would use this device in the future to use Zen as a dimensional slingshot to activate their teleportation devices on Earth. The fate of Zen itself after all of this time is unknown. What the G-Man and his employers required it for is unknown. And the fate of the many species that have made it their home is also unknown. They are just a mere few questions to be asked about the mysterious border world of Zen. The vast border world of Zen is absolutely a standout location for me. It redefined what could actually be possible within a video game world. With the way that Zen is portrayed throughout the game, it really helps your imagination run wild with how other areas of Zen could look that you don't get to visit. With the location having its own ecosystem, but obviously different from Earth, 
it does feel like a real place. I did add a G-Man cameo in this episode, hidden away somewhere, so if you do see him, you have a good eye. I hid him well. If you did find him, comment this, wake up and smell the ashes, down below. Depending on how many people find him, I may make him easier in the next one, or harder, who knows. The Zen chapters of Half-Life were breathtaking as a child, and then with Black Mesa being released, I got to experience the border world all over again. Now, with a stunning visual overhaul that really expanded how miraculous Zen is. For this video, I was really split on whether to use the original visuals or move on to the stereotypically better visuals of Black Mesa. As I asked in the poll, the clear winner was Black Mesa, and so, after replaying the Zen chapters, I did find that everything I talked about in this script was also in Black Mesa. Therefore, I could use Black Mesa's footage for the canon information I'd researched. I know that the Crowbar Collective added other enemies, but as we are going off Valve's canon vision and lore, the Black Mesa visuals were used just to show their vision in a more up-to-date way. Personally, I prefer the original for nostalgic sake, but with wanting to continue to grow this channel, it is important to maybe adapt my way of thinking and make small changes. This is why I decided to use a combination of both. It was a great way to appease both sides of you guys, but also to create a bridge between both games. It was great working with both of these games, and depending on the comments, I'll see which direction to go in in the future when it comes to covering Half-Life 1 content. I have said this before, but the best part about making these videos is that I get to explore these worlds while searching every nook and cranny for little bits of information. For this, I was able to use console commands to fly around the map and get a completely new perspective of the border world, both in the original Half-Life and in Black Mesa. Overall, Zen truly is a stunning location, not only in the visuals, but also in the storytelling. The best part about Bethesda games is that they have visual cues that come together to tell a story, and when exploring Zen, I saw this here too. Without even knowing the lore and arriving in Zen, you, as the player, can see the dead survey team members scattered around. You know that they were here for a reason, and now, you know that danger lives on this plane. There are bits of information scattered all over, and as someone that prefers story-based games, Valve really nailed the lore of this location perfectly. A little side note, this video was about Zen itself, I will be making a separate episode to cover the creatures that didn't make it into the final game, and a lot of these were Zenian creatures. I just wanted to say that as I do normally do a behind the scenes section, but from what I could find, Zen didn't really have that much information. That was the lore behind the border world of Zen in Half-Life. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. If you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe. I know you have already watched a couple of videos, so why not subscribe and then you'll be notified when I do post new content. We're at 30,000 now, that's absolutely crazy. I'm also diving into new series, I posted Fallout last week, and I may look into Witcher and Elder Scrolls as well. I will still post a new Half-Life every two weeks. Interacting in any way will help the video with the algorithm, so give it a like, a dislike, and a share if you want to show your Half-Life communities. If you would like to stay up to date with everything I do outside of YouTube and fancy some behind the scenes content, then go and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons who are helping to support the channel. I really appreciate you. Thank you to the old gods, Talos, Detroit, Avi WV, Brunette Janas, Jojo Scotia, Imaginary Holly, Ruben Mendoza and Putpa. I would also like to give an extra special thank you to the Elder Ones tier, Jonas, Lewis and Queen Arby. Thank you guys so much. What did you think of this lore video? For me, Zen is absolutely what I loved about the Half-Life series. It opened up the whole multiverse and even after we move on to Half-Life 2, we still feel the existence of Zen in the game as it is mentioned every now and then. It still feels alive. Furthermore, it is a shame we did not find out what the G-Man and his employers truly planned for it. What did you think of Zen? Did you prefer Valve Zen or Crowbar Collection Zen? And what do you think the G-Man had planned for Zen? Let me know in the comments below.
The next few videos I am thinking about are the Half-Life 2 beta story, Ravenholm and Alex. Any suggestions from you guys are welcome. That was everything I wanted to cover in this episode, now come by member. Enjoy your day and hit that beating quota. Bye. Thank you.